Good evening, and welcome to You Talk Show. This is part two of a two-parter, a very special You Talk Show, if you will, where we discuss how the projected economic recession of 2023 is going to play out. In Australia, we are protected from a number of the factors that have led to ruinous consequences elsewhere. And we had a proactive policy response the last time there was a global economic downturn, which prevented many of us from feeling the pinch in the same way as others did. This time around, we may not be so fortunate. I argue in the previous video that a recession has already begun as the average person's purchasing power has decreased. I mean, a bag of toilet paper is more expensive than it was at the beginning of 2021. Mm. It's toilet paper. It, it, yeah. it doesn't but about have that. that much going, and yeah, about yet that, it's actually, more expensive. About, about the price hikes. See, here's, here's the thing. Not only is that contributing to the recession, but it was mm -hmm. entirely unnecessary. Um, as I said last episode, um, the Australia Institute, if I remember correctly, were the ones who broke it down. And they, you can, you can look up their research online. They publish everything online. Um, and you can read about how it's not, um, how essentially inflation um, and, and the, <clears throat> the cost of living increases are all due to corporate greed it's entirely corporate greed as the you know inflation outside factors only accounts for about one percent of the price news flash capitalism makes poor people poor and rich people rich more at 11. are you still saying capitalism because i mean capitalism uh... I don't know, it makes here's us, the thing. Capitalism makes us sound fundamentally, like communist, but you know, I think communism capitalism is, is fundamentally. Look, let's look at all the isms, right? Call it corporatism if you want, but capitalism is about the accumulation of wealth, the accumulation of capital being the driving force. We live in we live in a society. We live in a society mm. where money is highly regarded, and in order to have the necessities of life we have to fork over money mm. um it is well see what i think is the, is the problem is not is not money itself it's not even the accumulation of money it's the detachment of of monetary value from the actual value of an asset yes. the actual value of real wealth essentially the the decoupling of money and wealth because money is supposed so to represent you're wealth. saying that fiat currency you're saying that actually, I, had... I think I am actually. Fine. Yeah, I think you've just made an oh, argument this for is, like this is Pandora's box. A gold though. Please, please, currency. I didn't mean to open Pandora's box here. We can't discuss that. We haven't. Got it's enough too time. late. We've opened. It, no, we've later, opened later, Pandora's later. box. It's we'll time to stick three. our we'll tongues do, in. We'll do a part. We'll do a part three, but not not now. Okay, I, so I'm, I'm just. Not, I, I was not ready I, for that level of discussion. I'm I'm cutting away. I'm cutting away for a moment because um i'm i'm going to refer back to the uh united nations uh, conference on trade and development um and they we, we've no, already no, burned through a quarter of our time though we need to get to the recession that's okay because this is about the recession okay quickly um, then what they're talking about is a slower job recovery so a slower rate of things returning to normal after the pandemic uh High inflation, monetary tightening, so governments looking to curb spending and control the flow of assets. Heightened uncertainties, aka the rich people who are lending other people money aren't sure they're going to get it back, so they want more money for their risk. They're basically saying that the jobs aren't coming back, in large part, and that we will see a larger amount of people worldwide that will be below the poverty line. I mean, anyone who is honest yeah, in well, Australia on when you Centrelink... Yeah, corporations do whatever the hell they want. Yeah. Anyone like, who is in Australia the run on of the Centrelink mill, exactly knows what they do. that they're below the poverty line already. I mean, look, I've heard, like, even... Uh, even, even the idea of charities is being abused worldwide, as a lot of charities work is just setting people up to, uh, to, to grow monocrops... Uh, monocrops means just the exact same plant for miles and miles or kilometers. Monocultures. Monocultures, that's the word. But basically, yeah. the, the exact same crop, um, you know, for something like Coke and Pepsi. And, you know, basically, they're, they're being paid shit wages 
absolutely terribly um, to make tons of products. Um, you know, and and you know, it's not the fault of these of these people in this third world country. They'll take what they can get. You know, but they're basically what they're being offered, and the only thing they're being offered is is essentially crap. So they're being treated like crap. The you know, their they're not their nation's not being properly developed. It's only being developed just enough and in such a specific way as to be beneficial only to these massive corporations. It is modern imperialism. It is corporate it <sighs> is corporate imperialism to effectively farm entire nations. I mean, you know, you're not wrong, but you know. It's... But you wish I hadn't said it quite like that? You wish I were wrong? We all wish uh, I was wrong. I mean, look, no, well, but come on. I, I mean, everyone Australia. Wrong, yes, Back to but... Australia. Yeah. It, it, just that the everyone disliked that from Fallout 4. Now, back to Australia. Yes. I've already said we're that we're starting to see the way, effects so of. Yep. We're starting to see the effects of recession. The prices are growing higher. Wages are stagnating, um, and it's all because corporations have had their run of the mill, and and the and the upcoming recession <laughs> due to the property market collapsing is join due to union. property investors having their uh their their run of the mill. Yes, do join your union. That is a very good i good thing to do is join a union. Essentially, what a union is, what it gives you is lobbyists in parliament, because no, no, essentially, no, no, no. well, see, basically, you're contributing to a union. They lobby the government. And you know that what that a union also gets... gives you though is collective bargaining, and that's the important. Oh right, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Got if everyone walks off the job site because nobody is getting treated right, then the profits stop flowing. Mm. So if you can organize everyone in collective action, you can bring your employers around to your way of seeing things. You can reach an agreement yeah. that is more beneficial. Yeah, like, and essentially it's kind of like, imagine it like this. i, I got to give them an example to really make this real for them. Imagine that people are working picking bananas. Like their job is they pick bananas and basically those bananas, they go to the shops, we buy them, we eat them. Those people, if they're, if they're unionized, they can all decide um, across multiple farms even with multiple employers, they can mm -hmm. decide to stop picking bananas altogether at the exact same time and say, we're not going to pick those bananas. We'll let them rot on the tree and on the ground unless we get a good work, a, a good, a better pay and better working conditions. Something that is adequate to meet our needs in life and something that is that is responsible in terms of working conditions. And that's and the, the if you're the that... US, you send in people with guns and you replace all the workers. But in the civilized guns. world, management says yeah, uh, we don't actually want those bananas to go to waste, and we would like to actually see some profits this year. So uh, yeah. can we interest you in healthcare and maybe a box of pizza? Yeah, yeah. they at least make an offer, you know, and they try hmm. and reach a middle ground. You might not get, you know, say say an adequate rate, uh, price uh, wage increase would be, you know, 10%, just as an example. You might not even get 10%, but you'll get something and it'll be decent. You might get 5 or 6%. And you might also get like better overtime benefits because some people, for whatever reason, have to work long hours. Um, and so those people might get extra benefits before their long hours. Um, you know, like extra the economic ex extra downturn pay. in Australia, Kyle. <laughs> we, are, we are getting derailed so much here. Come we on, are, get we with are. the program. Okay, the economic downturn. Okay, so how will this play out? Um, so property market will collapse. Uh, well, actually, just before that. So we're already seeing it starting to play out, but we haven't seen the recession, technically speaking, because a recession is defined as two or more quarters where we have negative economic growth. So it means the, the economy contracts. We effectively lose part of the economy for two quarters in a row. That's what's considered a recession. But in very practical terms for the average person, the recession has started. People are able to buy less with, with now even more money you know, we've seen a, a small uh, wage increase, and yet we can still buy less with even with that wage increase. And on top of that, um, you know, we'll see. We've, we'll see. Um, so we, we've, we're seeing that now. The adjustable interest rates have, or rather, mm -hmm. variable interest rates have just kicked in um, in yep, April I've, and May. So they I've seen that a few people rates. have had those yeah. interest rates rise now, and yeah, are and some people about didn't it. even know they were on they were on you know yep. fixed interest rates. They thought that's just my interest rate, you know, because they didn't quite <laughs> understand it because not everyone understands finances and banking stuff. Um, so you know, they get a home loan, they're on a fixed interest rate. It's just switched to variable. 
Um, and so it's just increased hugely. Just, you know, we're talking about like- Doubled in some going, cases. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> a doubling of your interest rate means you're paying, you know, thousands more dollars every year. Some people are paying thousands more a month, you know, and a lot of people, they borrowed <clears throat> um, and bought homes because the, the Reserve Bank of Australia promised not to raise interest rates. And the uh, former government of Australia under Scott Morrison- you know, worst government in our history, in my opinion, they pumped money into the housing market. They let you raid your super for it. So we had a, again, as I said last episode, you know, whereas I expected them back in 2015 to like pop the bubble in order to, in order to let, you know, ease the pressure. Instead, what we got was blow it up more boys, just, and it just, you know, it's gotten so big now and so much, there's so much pressure that, you know, now it's got to pop. And it's, you know, it's not just one of those, it's not just a, a relieving of the pressure. It's going to be catastrophic. You know, it's it's going to be Armageddon. If the if property prices drop by as much as they're predicted to drop, which is about 40% from its peak, then we are looking at the destruction of uh, about 15% of the nation's wealth. I think it was 15.3. Because I just, I actually checked the numbers again. Because about four years ago, I checked the numbers got a good idea of it, made a bunch of calculations. I did that all again recently. It's much worse. Before it was 30, uh, what was it? No. Sorry, before it was, yeah, 30% of the nation's wealth was in property. And uh, we could experience a drop of about 40%. Now mm -hmm. it's 51% of all the nation's household wealth. So this is health, household wealth particularly. I couldn't get number on the total wealth, including businesses. Um, but it's it's it, it's a similar number, essentially. Um, this is sort of the best proxy for it that we that I could get. Um, and so about uh, about fifty one percent of this nation's wealth is in is in property. Drop of forty percent on that. That is fifteen percent of this nation's wealth being destroyed virtually overnight. Then there's the knock on effect because you destroy a bunch of wealth. It's not just a one time thing. It ripples. You know, it's like tear, you know that it's like you tear a piece of paper. It then weakens it, and if there are already forces trying to pull the paper apart, it's going to keep ripping it. And that's how this is. So that big tear is going to let the rest of it tear. Um, and we're going to see, you know, if if it's managed very poorly, which I don't expect it to be managed very poorly because we have a we have a half decent government. Labor Party's not terrible with this sort of stuff. After all, back when Rudd was in charge, they did a good job at managing the GFC. Um, and so, you know, I expect that maybe, you know, instead of that being doubled for the knock-on effect, we might see about 50% of that for the knock-on effect. So, you know, 15, about 15%, then plus maybe another seven or 8%, um, give or take maybe 3%. So we're looking at something along the lines of 20 to 25%, I think, um, of the, of this nation's wealth disappearing over the span of probably about a year, um, if not, if not less. Kyle. Yeah. Sorry, am I just I being depressing you, again? I mentioned to you earlier that trying to understand the economy on the international scale is weird. What I didn't mention is that trying to understand the economy on the national scale is also weird. Yeah. So I'm just going to take the reins for it. Okay. Let me talk about the nation's wealth. We are looking at a variety of things. We are looking at the ability of the taxpayer to pay taxes that go into spending on infrastructure. We are looking at the stability of financial institutions, banks mainly, who do actually need to be able to have money on hand so when you pop in your ATM card, you can withdraw money. We are talking about the operation of the businesses around you um large concerns like Coles and Woolworths which need to pay for product get that product in ship that product around get it to your store and we are talking about the people who employ you or maybe you run your own business we are talking about the actual movement of money in the economy when we say that an economy is going to lose however many percent of its wealth. Um, it's very hard to conceptualize because unlike I've got, I've got a way Prime Minister it. has said, no, 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 no. You, you've you screwed the pooch enough on trying to explain No, no, this. I've got it. I've got it. So it's, no, it's, it's, basically, no. it's basically like stop, a car stop, stop. that loses value. Imagine you've got your car 
it's worth 50 grand, you know, because it's a good car. So then all of a sudden it becomes worth a lot less, say 35 grand. That would represent a loss in your wealth because for whatever reason that car has been devalued, it represents a loss in your wealth. And then Kyle, that might have other effects. If you pay mm. $50,000 for a car and it's worth $35,000 the next year, that doesn't matter because the car still does what you paid $50,000 for it to do. You are not actually materially affected unless you are speculating on the car, unless mm. you want to sell it for exactly what you bought it for. And let me tell you, in car terms, that's galaxy brain but see that's how they're treating property that's how they're treating houses all this money is imaginary it's not money that we're going to see we're only going to see the after effects we're going to see corporations try and retain profitability while their own holdings drop in value we're going to see price hikes on essentials like bread and batteries and fuel because the cost of logistics of moving those things around is going to increase as um, freight operators have their own costs increase and need to compensate for it. I mean, I would say that we're going to see people not getting the pay rises they deserve, but that's just another see, day working for a company, every, right? Every, yeah, but see, everything you're talking about there, that's the knock-on effect that I was describing. I mean, thank yes, you for the knock-on effect is all that we it see. In real terms. Hmm? The knock-on effect is all that we see. Yes. Like, unless you are a person who owns a lot of property, well, the knock-on effect is all you're going to experience. And you need not, to know what that quite. looks like to understand why the downturn is uh, relevant. I do see I do see what you're saying. I do see what you're saying. You know, like the knock-on effect is also all the jobs lost because all of a sudden those people who have lost a lot of wealth can't afford to hire as many people. Because they don't have. Sure, the... they can. They're just stingy bastards. Well, depends on it. Okay, here's the, the pursuit thing: pursuit of profitability the, the by largest the business wrecks us. Yeah, but the thing is, the largest of businesses, they'll still be able to hire people. However, it's the mid-level they'll use and it as smaller an excuse businesses. Not to. Well, they will, but you know, it's the mid-level and smaller businesses. Those are the people who will lose everything. Those are the people who will, who will, um, you know, they might have a few investment properties. But they got in late in the game. They got in late, you know, around like 20, 2019, 2020, just before interest rates started to, to rise. You know, they got in then and, you know, they might have a small business. It earns them a decent amount, but it's, you know, it doesn't make them incredibly rich. Um, and then there's even the next level up from them, which, you know, they're fairly wealthy. But, you know, this is the kind of thing that it'll it'll still affect them. It'll affect both those groups of people. It's only the ultra wealthy who are going to not be affected by this. And so that's that's where the, the primary effect comes in for those sort of mid-level, you know, and lower mid-level. It's only the, like, some of the upper mid-level and then higher. Those are the people that won't be affected. But we're talking about the top 10% of society there at, a, at, a, at the most. You know, the, the bottom 90% will, will feel the effects from this. Um, and the... I'm Kyle. We're actually out of time. We've run over time for about a couple of minutes. I I know you keep trying to explain this in terms of like what rich people experience. It's it's a mistake. Well, no. What I'm what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say is basically it it's it's kind of like that ripple effect we were describing. Essentially, I'm trying to say that it's going to be a big splash, and that will ripple through everything. The splash may be centered on those on those sort of middle income, you know. I guess what what you what you'd call middle class people, you know, they own their. There is own no middle class in Australia anymore, Kyle. Well, there hasn't been for two decades. Y yes and no. There are people that still own their own businesses, and they might, you know, they might have a few investments on the side, and they've already been doing it tough for a number of years, and the economy has been hollowed out, and there's less of them. But this is this is going to kill them off entirely. This is going to be like that final nail in the coffin. That's what I'm trying to describe here. So uh, why do our viewers care? Well, some of our viewers may be them. I'm not talking about the really rich people. I'm talking about, you know, talking about like your um your small business types. Like we're talking about the kind of people that might they they might own their own traffic control company. 
in terms of the money, you know, take the ta um the money for that. All you need is just a you know a a ute, all the signs that you need, and the licenses, which is just a couple of different safety cards. You know, that's like ten grand, maybe fifteen. Like that's you a don't small business. Actually, understand now. how much things cost, do you? Well, to get that started, no, I understand. No, you know, no, for a ute these days, for a ute itself, I'm not talking about a brand twelve ute. grand. Yeah, I'm not no, talking, I'm talking about, about a, a second-hand ute. Cars increased massively in value over the last two years. Really? Oh, okay. I yeah. Know. Last time I was a um, control was a couple was a good couple of years ago. So this yeah. was what I was actually hearing from somebody because I knew somebody. Um, he was actually about to go into business himself, and I was working with him, um, start his own company. He basically had everything he, he needed, um, and back then he he had only spent. Um, I think it was something like twelve grand, mm. uh, but then again, here you own the Ute for it. Um, twelve grand bought you a lot of things back then too. Yeah, and because the purchasing power has dropped and is continuing to drop. Mm. So I guess I guess the takeaway from this is it might be a lot harder to start your own business. Yeah, it definitely will be a lot harder to start your own business, and also the also the jobs are going to dry up. A lot of jobs are going to dry up because they each of those small businesses might employ maybe three people, but you know you take away a thousand small businesses, that's three thousand jobs. Mm -hmm. So that's you know that's a lot, and people already are feeling, um, they're feeling the pinch to such a degree that they're not they're not spending as much money on, um, luxury items. I uh, I forget what the exact figure was, but Martin North um did a video on this, um, where he actually talked about um. He actually talked about it, and he gave a figure. It was a fairly high figure for how much um, disposable income expenditure um, had been uh, recorded for the last month, and it went down by um, double digits. I can't remember the exact figure, though. I think this one's going to need some chopping up in post. <laughs> maybe, maybe. All right. Well, um, I'll figure it. I'll figure that out. That out. I might uh might have a lot of editing to do. For now, thank you for your uh for your time. Thank you for watching. We hope that this was in some way informative and not as all over the place as my mind was tonight. We'll catch you later. Have a good one. Good night.